he called a spade a spade. So these three Hebrew boys were under judgment. They were abandoned. You know, till the last moment they were hoping that God will somehow do a miracle and change the heart of the king so that they will be spared from throwing, being thrown into the furnace. They prayed and they prayed and they hoped and they hoped. But God did not answer their prayers. So they were bounded hand and foot. How will you like that for your faith to be tested when you prayed and you prayed and you prayed and God did not answer your prayer? You were bounded hand and foot. Before they were dragged to be thrown, the king, being so nice and kind, he said, I'll give you one last opportunity to repent. One last opportunity. If you will bow down and worship this idol, then you will not be thrown. So the boys look at the king and said, Oh, great king, we honor you, we respect you. Our God is able to save us. Now, that's not the best part of the story, no? The best part of the story is what they said next. Even if he does not save us, we will not bow down. Even if he doesn't save us, even if he doesn't answer our prayer, that doesn't matter. Our faith lies not in the providence. Our faith lies in the immovable rock of ages. Our faith lies in the God who is God. He's a good God. Whether he does good for me or not, he's still good. Whether he answers my prayer or not, he's still good. Whether he heals me or not, he's still good. He is a good God. Look at their remarkable faith. They were under judgment. Their faith in God, who does not forsake them, protected them. It is their faith that made them fireproof. Isn't that nice? Yes. Let me tell you one wonderful thing. If you read Exodus 27, I am living up to my reputation being a long-winded preacher. <laughs> I'm just halfway through. <laughs> Shall I stop and continue tomorrow? I must ask my boss. We'll continue tomorrow, okay? You are the boss. Not halfway. Three quarter way. Three quarter done. Are you sure, everybody? Yes. Okay. Uh, we'll go up to 1.30? Yes. Is it okay? Yes. All right. You know, each time I come to Lancaster, I always pray, Lord, I, I should be good. I should be good. I should be good. <laughs> I should not live up to my reputation. I'm becoming like James Bond, you know. His reputation precedes him. <laughs> so, if you read Exodus 27, verses 1 and 2, God gives Moses how to make the plans, how to make the altar of burnt sacrifice. He takes, he tells him, take a shitty wood and overlay it with solid brass and then make the brazen altar. Several years ago, some pastors took this scripture to the task. They made a door, three by six of shitty wood and overlaid it with brass and they brought it to the London City Council's Fire and Safety Department. They said, we would like you to test the fire worthiness of this door. 
They never told them what it's made of. And the fire safety officers subjected this dog to all kinds of extreme heat. And their result was, it is 100% fireproof. And then they told them it is just shitty mood found in the Bible. Shitty mood covered with brass according to biblical specifications. You know, the altar of burnt sacrifice, constant burnings are taking place there. You couldn't have, it should not be covered with shitty mood overlay with gold. The gold will melt. So God made it to be covered with brass. In the same manner, the shitty mood is our flesh. Their faith in God became like a solid brass all around them. When they entered into the fire, they were 100% fireproof. Amen. Amen. In the same manner, when, you, when your faith is strong like that, whatever judgment comes, they may be burning up this entire town, but this church will be fireproof. Amen. Amen. You will be fireproof. Not a hair on your skin will be burned. That's what the scripture says, right? Not a hair was burned. God protected. Though you are abandoned, but in that abandonment, you see what is deep inside you. How strong is your faith? Whether it, does it still believe that God is a good God? I have walked through that, you know, for three years of my life, very recently. And that was a great test. During that test, the foundation, like what Neville said this morning, the foundation was, the test was, do you still believe that God is a good God? In that abandonment. Do you still believe in the love of God? That God loves you? That His loving kindness endures forever for you? In spite of all the lies that come, like a flood. In that abandonment, I felt that totally abandoned by God. In the dark night of my soul. Have you read the book called The Dark Night of the Soul? You should read it. By John the Cross. The Dark Night of the Soul. In the dark night of your soul. Where is your God? In the dark night of the situation surrounding the three Hebrew boys. They were under judgment. They were judged and sentenced. They said, even if God does not help us, even if we are fried chicken of Babylon, <laughs> Babylon fried chicken, you know, <laughs> yet we will believe our God. We will die singing that God is a good God. You know, when this revelation was given to me, at the same time, it was also given to me to understand this is how the martyrs face death, singing. Because their faith now becomes, they are fireproofed. They are fireproofed. Nothing was scratching them. Nothing was scratching them. And then I immediately I recalled the many stories I've read about martyrs who were burned at stakes. None, none of them cried, you know. They were either singing, or they were whistling, or they were smiling. How could you do that? Because you become fireproof. Now look at the Lord Jesus Christ. Judgment was passed on him to be the sin bearer. That was the judgment upon him. There was nothing he could do to avert that because that was a judgment that was upon him. In Luke chapter 9, verse 30 to 31, you read that two witnesses, Moses 
and Elijah was sent to even remind him or talk to him about the sufferings that he was going to go through. They told him and then he prayed. In Luke chapter 22, verse 42, he prayed, Lord, if it be possible, let this judgment pass away. See, at the darkest night of your soul, when your, when your faith is tested to the extreme, in our flesh we cry out, Lord, let this pass. When will it be? How long will it last? If possible, let it be averted. If possible, take it away, remove it away. Don't let this judgment come. The Lord himself prayed like that. But then, he submitted willingly to the judgment. He said, I know, this cannot be averted because I came for that. So he submitted himself 100% by embracing it. He embraced it. Now look what happened on the cross. Matthew 24, verse 46 tells us, He cried out, My father, my father, why have you forsaken me? Till that moment, you know, he always confessed, I and my father are one. I am the good shepherd. The very word that God spoke in Exodus 3.16, I am that I am. The Lord Jesus repeated himself many times by saying, I am the way, I am the good shepherd, I am the door. He said all those to tell the Jews that he is the God of his fathers in Exodus 13, 3.16. He kept on saying that, but now he felt totally abandoned. Totally abandoned. Why? 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 Yet, even in that abandonment, he did not lose his faith in God. Because in Luke 23, verse 46, we read he saying, Lord, into your hands I commit my spirit. Even though he felt abandoned, he did not lose his faith. He still trusted in God, like the three Hebrew boys. Even if God did not help us, we will still trust in God. So that is the faith that we need, that will see you through during this period of judgment. The only way for us to survive is hold on to your faith. All things that can be shaken will be shaken so that the things that cannot be shaken will remain. What is the only thing that cannot be shaken? Your faith in the unchanging God. That is the only thing that remains. Everything else will fall apart. Your world will fall apart. Your mind will fall apart. But your faith in the unchanging God, it will not fall apart. Only that will remain till the end. So now let's conclude this. In conclusion, can the judgment be averted, stopped, or God's mind change? No. The Lord Jesus Christ himself told his disciples in Matthew 24, 15 and verse 20. He said, all this will come. But when it comes, this is what you shall do. He told them what to do during the judgment. He said, this is what you do. Pray that your flood will not be in the winter. Pray, protect yourselves, take care of yourselves. It's a survival of the fittest during the heat of the game. And in Luke 21, 36, he said, Pray always that you shall be accounted worthy 
to escape. If you don't pray, then you won't be accounted worthy. Pray always. Pray always. What does that mean? Build. Build. A healthy, disciplined relationship with God. A consistent relationship with God. Not a once a week relationship. A consistent daily walk with God. You need to build your faith. These are the days before the judgment is poured out. In days of goodness. Like what Joseph did now. In seven good years, store up the wheat. Store up. In during these good years that are before us, store your spirit men up. Because when the judgment comes, you may not know where to go and look for your faith to be strengthened. Conventions and meetings like this may not be held. Airways may be locked. No radio programs, no TV programs, internet censored. So you have been cut off from all the world. How are you going to stand then? Who is going to help you? Stop going up to the preacher and say, pray for my headache, pray for my stomach, pray for my this, pray for my that. Hey, okay, come on, let's grow up from being a baby Christian. Stop. Let's stop. You cannot continue to be babies all your life. When is it going to end? If you keep on coming up to the speaker and say, can you please pray that my faith remains strong? You should pray for that. There are shortcuts in the Bible, you know, how to increase your faith. You want to know? So many shortcuts. But they are long cuts. It's short, but it's long. The shortcut is this. Stir up your inner man by praying in the spirit, building up on your most holy faith. That is the shortcut, but it takes a long process to do. And we don't want to do that because we are lazy Christians. So we go through another unrighteous shortcut. We queue before the preacher. Please, let's stop all that. You cannot continue doing that. Go past the outer court and into the holy place. You know, let me show you something, okay? In the outer court, you have two furniture. The altar of burnt sacrifice and the lever of washing. In the outer court, the people brought their sacrifices to the priest. Say, priest, please offer this on my behalf. So everything they did was to the priest. They come to the priest. But in the holy place, there are three furniture. The table of showbread, the altar of incense and the lampstand. In these three furniture, the priests offered themselves. There were no other middlemen. Where else in the outer court there is a middleman between you and the sacrifice. So when you continue to remain as a baby Christian, walking up to the pastor, walking up to the preacher, can you pray for my stomach pain? Can you pray for this pain? Pray for that pain? Pray for this? Pray for that? Then you are behaving like what they did in the Old Testament days, bringing your sacrifice to the priest, say, can you please offer this on my behalf? It's over. Now come into the holy place where you offer the incense on the altar. You bend your knees and you pray. You pray in the spirit. You meditate the word. You take the richness out of the word by yourselves. This is what we should do. Pass by. Date works. Let's go on towards perfection. So, the judgment cannot be averted. So, what shall we do to survive during the judgment? Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 3 have the answer for us. 
Now please turn with me to Zephaniah chapter 2 and the verse 3. It says here, Seek the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, who have kept his ordinances. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be you shall be hidden in the day of the Lord's anger. So what are we to do? Number one, seek the Lord. Start building up a relationship between you and your God. Build up. Start loving Him. Come back to your first love. Spend time worshipping the Lord. Establish an altar in your house between you and the Lord. Secondly, seek righteousness. Do works of righteousness. Obeying the commandments of God. Obeying and doing it. Now, Noah was called a just man, a righteous man, because he was righteous. Thirdly, seek meekness. What is that? Leaving the kingdom principles of God stated in Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. The teachings that the Lord Jesus Christ preached on the Beatitudes. And when you do all this dutifully, prayerfully in the fear of God. Zechariah chapter 2 verse 5 says, and God will stretch out his hand and cover you with a wall of fire. You know, let me tell you something very interesting. What made the three Hebrew boys totally fireproof? One was inside them, they became solid, they fed brass. But, you see, the very hair on their skin were not even burned. So I pondered about that. Then when the Lord showed me the scripture, he said, this is what happened that day. You know, math tells us plus times minus equals what? You people never studied mathematics in school? <laughs> plus times minus is equal. Minus, okay? Plus into plus? Plus. So, you need fire to fight fire. Fire, when it meets fire, it kills. Right? You know that, right? So, the fiery furnace is all fire, and here comes the Lord who surrounds with a wall of fire. So, fire meets fire, the fire is killed. So, not a hair on their body was burned. So likewise will the Lord protect you from all evil, from whatever judgment that will come. Finally, now in the midst of all this, while everything seems to be going good for you, Satan will come to tempt you to give up your faith during this judgment period. Give up your faith. Why? Why are you fighting why are you holding look at all this mess that you're in this is what happened to peter in luke 22 verse 31 the lord jesus told peter the devil desired to sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you peter i have prayed for you you know the lord jesus christ is praying for us that also means that another thing God has a secret special force of his saints living and in glory who will come to help us two kinds you know the makna him the living saints God's special forces there are many of them in the world today, but they are hidden. They live hidden lives. Their ministry is not publicly known, for the Lord will not allow that. Their, their ministry is very hidden. They look ordinary guys, but they will suddenly appear to help, and then they suddenly disappear. 
And there are also saints in glory who will come to do those kind of work. Why God uses them instead of angels? You know, angels cannot sympathize with us. They have not gone through what we have gone through. So God sends humans, saints, who have gone through what you have gone through, and they'll say, don't worry. I've gone through this same path. This is how we will do it. You know, in the, in the month of April, I was called by the Lord to fast for seven days in Jerusalem. So during those days when I was there, I had several visits from the Saint Elijah, and he gave me teachings about Jezebel. And he said, the end time warrior army must not do the mistake like what I did. I ran away from Jezebel, but the last day's army must confront Jezebel, must confront Jezebel, and this is the secret. You must know the workings of Jezebel. Now, it takes a saint like Elijah, who has gone through that path, to come and teach us, okay, this is what you do. This is where I slipped, but you don't have to. But this is what you shall do, so that you can overcome and complete it, complete the cycle. We must pray. Pray. The Lord Jesus said, pray that your faith will remain strong during this temptation. In Luke 22, 40, the Lord Jesus Christ himself said that. You pray, you pray that you will be delivered from temptation. And in 2 Peter 2.9, the word of God says, God knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation. My dear brothers and sisters, put your entire faith in the goodness of God and be prepared for the worst of times that's going to come upon us. If you are prepared, then you are fireproofed. Amen? Amen. Thank you.